vlog number three. So Abby and I spent a few days in the Bahamas. Because the Bahamas is one of the most expensive countries in the world, I'll be listing the prices of things as we go. We arrived at 6 p.m. at the airport in Nassau, picked up the rental car, and drove 30 minutes east to the Airbnb. We didn't feel like spending hundreds of dollars a night for a hotel in Paradise Island, like the typical tourist thing to do. We ended up staying at an Airbnb just 10 minutes outside of Paradise Island. Our first and only stop for the night was to the Atlantis Hotel on Paradise Island to check out their aquarium as it was free after 6 p.m. The next morning, we drove close to downtown to see the Queen's Staircase, a landmark in the south. We first walked by the Water Tower and Fort Fincastle, both located at the top of the Queen's Staircase. We then ate at a restaurant called Wyop Dime Restaurant, which is pretty expensive. And yeah, and they tried to charge us a bottle of water for $9. Yeah, no. We then drove to our first beach, Cable Beach, on the left side of Nassau, which was pretty empty due to the pandemic. The water was warm, the sand was white, and we got to see a big stingray at the shores. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah. On our way back to the Airbnb from the beach, we stopped by downtown to see what's happening. And the answer to that is pretty much nothing. Everything's closed. Morning number two, we drove out west to see the Clifton Heritage National Park. I recommend the snorkel here. This park has an underwater garden in the beach that is still somewhat destroyed after Hurricane Matthews in 2016. On our way back, we stopped by and chilled at Jaws Beach, which had almost no currents and such calm waters. <laughs> Morning number three, we took a ferry out to the Blue Lagoon Island, a three mile ride away from Nassau. It was a nice little getaway at a private secluded island to lounge around and detox. When we got back to Nassau, we ended the day at Cabbage Beach, the best beach on the island in my opinion. It has a beautiful scenery, clear waters, and the restaurant on the beach served delicious baked chicken. Morning number four, the main event. We booked an all-day tour that requires us flying 30 minutes into the Exima Islands of the Bahamas with multiple stops over there for activities. Our first stop was the Thunderball Grotto, an underwater cave where we can snorkel and see exotic marine life. Stop number two was seeing the famous swimming pigs of the Exuma Islands. <laughs> Don't <laughs> 
Our third stop was the Compass K, where we could swim with nurse sharks. Remember, watch your fingers. They're all around you. <laughs> We then stopped at the Eczema Sandbar, which is pretty much just shallow waters, white sand, and basically a photo spot. Fifth stop. We stopped at a tiny island where we fed many iguanas indigenous in that island. Last night, we stopped at a lively area with a bunch of restaurants called the Arawa K to find dinner. I definitely recommend this on the weekends. There's great music and food, and a lot of people just having a good time. Okay, so would I recommend going to the Bahamas? Yes and no. Yes, because it is beautiful, there's crystal clear beaches, and very friendly locals. US credit cards like Amex were widely acceptable. However, I also say no because it is crazy expensive and everything is inflated. They also had a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. and everything, including restaurants, started to close at 9 p.m. So if you didn't grab any food by 9 p.m., good luck with your appetite throughout the night. I mean, we still had a blast though, and my favorite activity of this trip was, of course, the famous swimming pigs of eczema. <laughs> 